Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You need a notary? Yeah. Probably the girls in the passport okay. across the hallway. Uh, no, we just have a easement for the signature and sewer project that I need to get out of that. Thank you. Yeah. When we get done, we'll go next door to the Virgin Drive. Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, yeah. My brother and I also have a lot of this here. So there was like two parents and then yeah. another couple. Yeah, but we got a pretty good one. Coaching? It was just a little bit. I'll do it right. It's beautiful. I have that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah. Big day. That looks so nice. Yeah. 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 Downtown. That's a lot of fun. Are you doing this on purpose? No, I know. I know, but I'm having a lot of Right. Going to different parties and stuff. You know, that's not change. Always a new trustee's kill. Right. That's fun, though. Yeah. Oh, we have a brand. And how is the brand side? I'd like to hold the car. Oh. Yeah. We have Indian Scarter Bond. Oh, so cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but you know about that. Nice surprise. Somebody, like, somebody sent me an email today. Oh, oh no. I didn't send anything. Everything else kind of pales in comparison. Yeah, yeah somebody sent something. Yeah, I can't remember what it was. Because we just flicked and just smiled. It's so much fun. Well, let me know. It's so much fun. Yeah. Or me that email. We always put the tools getting open next week. Yeah, what's that? Yeah, my niece is a lot, but not the grandkids. So we're not the full time. Okay, it's 1 o'clock, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, first, I want to thank everyone for being here. This is a special public meeting um, hosted by the Trumbull County Board of Commissioners in cooperation with the Warren Township Trustees and our Trumbull County Metro Parks Board of Commissioners. Thank you for all for accepting the invite to attend. Um, the reason for the meeting we have here today is to discuss the uh, dam and potential of dam removal in uh, Warren Township. The first thing I'd like to do, being that uh, everyone does know each other, let's call roll for our commissioners first. Mr. K. Mesa? Here. Mr. Malloy? Here. Ms. Frenchko? Absent. Okay. Uh, I'd like to go around the room. I'm Denny Malloy, President of the Board of Commissioners. I think I've met all of you before. Just met Mr. Fabrizio today. Um, uh, Mauro K. Mesa, Trumbull County Commissioner. Nicolette D'Archangelo, Parks Commissioner. John Brown, Parks Commissioner. Kay Anderson, Warren Township Trustee. Edward Anthony, Warren Township Trustee. Brian Yoho, Warren Township Trustee. Steve Moss, uh, Metro Parks. Randy Fabrizio, Trumbull Metro Parks. Zachary Savet, Executive Director for Trumbull County Metro Parks. Okay, um, we also have Scott Varner will be here from the, he's here somewhere, from the Sanitary Engineers to answer any questions. And I believe we may have a representative from the county engineer um, if they decide to show or they, they may be on the phone. So if we have questions regarding that. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we want to have this meeting. I kind of called this meeting. I came in office after this was all started. And I was invited to a meeting in Warren Township. Um, they requested the commissioners help fund a study about possible alternatives to removal of the dam. Uh, all three of our commissioners attended that study a month and a half or so ago, and uh, it was highly attended by residents and concerned citizens of Trumbull County that had a lot of different views. Uh, we had some people from Eastgate, which I believe is the gentleman from Eastgate here uh, also. I saw him downstairs. Um, there you are, sorry. Um, and this was an issue that apparently you guys put a lot of work into before me. And there's been a, a lot of work since then, uh, but it seems like there's a 
swell of people that are saying, hey, wait a minute, hold up. Uh, we want our voice uh, listened to, and we re you really explored all the pros and cons of removing the dam. But we'd like to see a little more effort on the pros and cons of not removing the dam. So we attended that meeting as an informational aspect, and it was, it was pretty uh, informative to me. Uh, been that time, I think every one of us at the table have been dealing with residents and citizens and doing our research and dealing with the media uh, since then. So I said, we need to get everybody at the table now that we are the decision makers today. There's some new board members. There's some new board members on our end. Um, there's some more people in the public that may be informed or engaged a little bit more, and it's caught the media's attention a little bit more. So we thought it, it prudent. You can go and sit there, sir. Oh, okay. Uh, and we thought it would be prudent to... Get everybody together right, and, and look at the requests that we have for an alternative dam study and hear what each entity kind of has to say. I want this meeting to be a, just a rolling up the sleeves, a meeting of the minds, and a professional manner of let's cut out all the, the rumor and hearsay and he said, she said, which you get in community aspects of things, especially with a, an issue that's so polarizing as this. People are very, very passionate about their viewpoints. And let's just get the facts on the table and try to come up with what is the best decision to make for all the citizens of the county and and see what we can or cannot do uh, as a group to serve the public in the, in the best interest. So that's that's why we're here today um, in regards to that. And I guess, Commissioner, I know you were involved in this. Yeah. Uh, before me, maybe a little background on uh, uh, yeah. how this all came to be. Commissioner, you, you summed it up pretty well. Um, this is something, although it's not a Trumbull County project, you know, as, as a Board of Commissioners, uh, this is not our project, but, but it's obviously affecting Trumbull County residents, right? I mean, that's why we're here today. So uh, we're acting as more uh, as facilitators today. Uh, if there can be some sort of mutual um, benefit uh, from this meeting, that's, that's, that's what we're here to do. Uh, again, you know, a lot of people have come to the commissioners and said, well, you guys have to fix this. But as the Board of County Commissioners, we have very um, specific duties. Uh, and we're going sort of above and beyond what we normally would do to make sure that everybody's voice is being heard. Because unfortunately, what we have is, for a long, long time, I don't think we've had this sort of dialogue. Uh, there's been a lot of, you know, um, for whatever reasons, and I'm not, you know, right, wrong, or indifferent. I'm not, I'm not blaming any side, but, but there hasn't been a lot of communication. Uh, and when there's so, something that's, that's, that's this uh, much a focal point in a community, and the, and the community has this much passion towards the subject, they need to be heard and they need to be understood, and their and their concerns need to be understood. So that's why we're here today to give you that platform and to try to um, come up with an amicable. Uh, resolution for all parties, if that's possible. So, um, with that being said, I, I, I want to thank uh, the Parks Board for being here. I want to thank the trustees for being here. Uh, Eastgate as well. Uh, you know, th th they have a wealth of knowledge on this, and the public for their concern on this. We know that this has been an issue for this uh, community for a long, long time. That we know that there's 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 possible health concerns, there's possible safety concerns, there's problems possible recreational concerns, the concerns run, run across the gamut. So we're, we're going to try to address some of those things here today. We have our sanitary engineer here today because obviously what we do control as a Board of Commissioners is that sanitary sewer project, uh, the Meadowbrook project that we've, we've gotten substantial funding for that we look forward to going forward with. Um, obviously the timeline of these things need to coincide. and. Um, you know that's that's a big concern. Is if if that water uh, table goes down considerably, and there's effluent going into the river, uh, and the and the project isn't done on time, and the dams are moved, you know, what what does that mean? Um, so so we're, we're trying to get to the bottom of all this and trying to control what we can, but in the meantime, trying to bring people to the table to try to explain um, as best they can to to, to uh, hear the concerns and, and maybe get educated in the process. So. Um, Commissioner, I, I don't know if the trustees want to want to add anything. Well, I'd, I'd kind of like to start, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Um, the Metro Parks Board is kind of driving the project here, so I'd like to start with Zach. Just maybe if we could on the history of how you acquired this, how <laughs> this was all initiated in the first place, and how it came to be a Metro Parks Dam kind of project. 
Yeah, so the uh, Metro Parks as a district acquired the property in 1993 and that includes the dam. Um, and that was actually a condition of accepting the property uh, as and required the park district to take the dam um, as a you know, requirement. So, um, so we voted since 1993. Um, there have been approaches over the years of various state entities talking about, you know, our dam removal, you know, potential of. Uh, so that's, you know, throughout the years, it, you know, nothing's been very consistent on that end until the regional effort to remove the dams and to create more of a recreational area along the Mahoney River and, um, you know, for the Mahoney Valley as well. So a regional, you know, effort to do that. Um, so once you know, that was undertook, my board did undertake, you know, a series of years, you know, gathering information, you know, and part of it was they did a uh, public comment period along with gathering information from Eastgate, Ohio EPA, um, many and varying uh, different resources. I know they talked to community members and reached out to as many as, or even reached out to the community members as well. Um, so, you know, they undertook all that information and made a decision that was, you know, based on the information that was provided to them. Okay. Okay, would you like to speak on behalf of Warren Township as far as your communication regarding the dam or, or how it, you were, I guess, notified of it? Uh, yeah, this has been ongoing for the last few years and it's been stated more than once that uh, question is why are we just getting involved now? And we have been very vocal about this since at least 2019, maybe 2018. Community Center, there was a township meeting with standard room only. The Howie Day was there. Everybody knew the stand at Warren Township took against this because of the residents being upset. So, it's, it's kind of concerning to us as a board when we read and been going through a lot of the literature that they have also put Warren Township uh, representatives included with these studies, which it, it's quite concerning because we, we were never involved with any of these studies. And of course, when residents start doing their own research and they see this, they come right to the board, want to know why, no other way to put it, why we're in with this whole project of removing the dam. So this has been ongoing. Um, <coughs> you can see from the crowd that's here today that people are still upset. And this, this uh, affects our community. A lot. I mean, we we have had a director from the Board of Health make comments that if that would come out before the sewer lines are put in, that it could create an urgent health hazard. We heard that said by Gary Newbrow, who's in charge of putting the sewer lines in. Doesn't look like that's going to be done till maybe 2025. And now there's talk of them moving this on this right within the next year or so. So we have a deep concern for that and kind of questionable why we have two Trumbull County Department heads, actually three, because engineer Randy Smith also has concerns about the road and the impact that that could have. So we have three Trumbull County Department heads that have brought questions to you as, as a Board of Commissioners, and we're sitting here discussing alternatives. So, as most people know, because this has all been on the news, we uh, talked to DLZ, which is a firm, about getting an alternative and doing another study. We asked if the commissioners would, would pay on this part of the study. Engineer Smith uh, said he would go 10000 because of his concern for the roads. We have another study done. I know you had an attorney because you had to get uh, 
an approval before you spent the other 30000 And I, I guess the question is, uh, because we've been at many meetings in the last couple of months, do you have an opinion from that attorney? And from what I understand, the attorney pretty much said that according to OLC that you could spend that. So if that happens... I guess for the record, too, we have the copy of the attorney we hired's opinion. I'd like to request from Mr. Ganley so we waive privilege on this Absolutely. so we can share the attorney's opinion publicly with everybody. Mm -hmm. And it does state in here that if we so chose as commissioners to fund an alternative study or to donate money towards the study you're asking for, we do have the power to do that uh, legally to do that. So that's what that's what the letter states. Sorry to interrupt. And I know that a couple months ago when all this issue, you actually did pass the <clears throat> resolution ordinance pending that you could have the authority to, to do this study. So I guess as the Board of Trustees, we're sitting here asking you if you will do that. So we get some others. Um, one of the people looked at the proposal that was done and just felt that it was very one-sided. Okay. So, so we have a study that was done somewhere in the past, I would imagine, right? Who paid for the last study? Parks Board. Mm -hmm. Parks yeah, Board it, or? Well, it was paid as, so we did, so there was some research done prior to the dam removal, which was the study done by MS Consultants. And we're also- And what was that study, what were they engaged to do? To look at the, how to remove the dam or the possibilities of removing the, the dam or the alternatives? The, the hydraulic study, Essentially saying, you know, what are, what are what are the water levels would be after dam removal, um, that information specifically. So were they engaged at that time to to do engineering on any other alternatives, or if the dam should remove, they're not, or just on if the dam's removed, what are the effects? Correct. Okay, so there hasn't been a a study per se like what they're asking for of. What are the effects if the dam is not removed? Mm -hmm. What are what are the alternatives well, that could maybe reach the same end result? Well, yeah, I mean, that's yeah. Fair statement. Yeah, fair statement. Okay. Yes. Now, well, how much money has been involved in this so far? Where are we in the process as far as as actually removing the dam mm -hmm. from the work that you've all done so far? So, to date, for the Metro Parks, we have spent it's. We're going to be over $100,000 within the next month. That's, you know, cash out. Um, now, we're still waiting on some bills that will more than likely be, you know, by the end of the year, our consultants have told us about $700,000 total, you know, spend out from the various sources. None of that's county taxpayer money. That's all grant money. So you get through WRSP, correct. Okay. And if you can... If you allow me, I can walk through some of that with the FAQ that sure. we provided, if that's acceptable for you. Sure. I anything, think there's some... anything you have to bring <laughs> to the table, that's what we're here for. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of information <clears throat> in here, and I'm not going to cover it all because I think covering it all just, you know, take, you know, way too long. But, you know, some of the things that, you know, we have heard mentioned were, you know, the road, the, you know, the environmental effects, you know, with, um, animals and fish and that kind of stuff. I wanted to make sure we covered that. Um, we, I'll briefly cover the um, septics and that kind of stuff because there is some of that information in here. But also I wanted to cover the water table because I know that's been brought up, at least the, the word water table. So I just want to make sure I cover that too. So we'll start on question, sorry. We'll start on question three. So we'll start, do, we have, do we have copies of yeah. yeah, 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 everyone should have a copy. Start, start on question two, Zach. Oh, okay. Because that's the question that was brought up. The first line is there about a benefit to public safety. The dam as it exists is a potential drowning hazard. Just for the record, nobody has ever drowned at this dam that we know of in history, right? I I can't say that for a definite fact. But we don't know, we don't have any record of anybody drowning at this dam. It isn't like we have drownings that occur mm -hmm. regularly and we need to remove the dam for health benefit. As far as we know, nobody's drowned at this okay. dam. Okay, now number three. Okay. 
I got a question before we start. So this is being put together from you and the Trumbull Metro Park Board, correct? All correct. Right. Yeah. Well, not not the information. So we asked our consultants. We reached out to other state agencies and other, you know. But this is all science. your side, correct? Right? This is all you're gathering information that you guys have obtained over four years. Uh, this is information, like I said, from you know consultants that are. But it's know, the Metro Parks stance. Yes. They're your not you know. not our stance. This is fact information that we received gathered by the Metro Parks by the Metro Parks that we're presenting. Okay. It's not opinion. That's fair. It's, it's fair, but the amazing part about this is, and I know the gentleman is here from EPA, and I've attended a zillion meetings which we have not even been invited to the last three meetings that you've had. Well, that's Eastgate. That's Eastgate. That's Eastgate. Or Eastgate. I'm yeah. sorry, Eastgate. And, uh, you know, these are all fine and dandy, but why haven't we have been included? Why haven't there been any communications for us in the last year and a half, two years? And uh, that'll be that'll be part of the summary when we get through okay. this. Let's get all the facts on the table first, I just want to let and then we'll get into stuff like that a little bit. Not yeah. rest, okay. I understand. Thank you. Good point taken. Okay. So... Question three is, you know, how is removing the dam a benefit to the environment and wildlife? Um, you know, dams, and I'll let you kind of read the answer. I don't know if I want to read that answer to everybody, but um, so essentially, you know, dams create a unhealthy river uh, ecosystem, and removing the dam would actually create a healthy ecosystem that, you know, the species that are in the river now are indicative of a unhealthy river system, not a healthy one. So the, you know, the, with the, especially for the wildlife, you know, removing the dam would, you know, return the river and river species, you know, back to more of a free flowing system and the healthier species, you know, would come back in. So more bottom feeders are there now, you know, because that's all that can kind of live in that environment. So we're hoping, you know, other fish species um, that are for a healthier environment, you know, come back. And that's the public. Hold your questions. Write them notes in your phone. We'll get to the public comment section later. I don't want to interrupt. Let's get everything on the table first, and then we'll entertain because the questions may be answered through someone else's presentation. And then, uh, you know, so question four, is you were talking about, you know, funding, we can cover that real quick. Uh, so this funding is through Ohio EPA's Water Resource Restoration Sponsor Program. No lo local tax dollars are uh, funding the project. Um, so that's question four. And so we'll skip down to question six. Um, so what happens to the existing banks, bridges, roads, et cetera, when the dam is removed? So our design build team is currently reviewing uh, we'll perform studies such as site assessments, sediment surveys, sampling, testing and geotechnical testing, stability analysis, hydraulic modeling, and alternative evaluations during the preliminary stages of the project. This will identify what effects of removing of the dam could occur, then design appropriate stabilization, protection, and restoration measures uh, that can be accomplished. Uh, during the design of the appropriate measures, proper coordination with governing entities, Engineer ODOT Ohio Edison will be performed to ensure requirements are met and the infrastructure is not compromised. So, speaking specifically to the roadway, you know that is being reviewed as part of our project. Um, you know, another question about the aquatic life and fish, about you know specifically some um, endangered, potentially endangered species that are out there. Um, question eight answers that one. Um, that the design build team will perform site assessments and studies on the river in areas within the project limits to identify aquatic species that may require specific actions, i.e. mussels. If mussels are discovered within the site, then proper steps for relocation will be performed. So that you know, has been identified within the project. So we're going to actually skip to the last question, and then we'll, we'll come back. Uh, so question 14, will the removal of the dam have any effect on the area's water table and well? So we did ask that question actually before we did the project and again um, just here recently because that was you know, brought up on one of the calls. So the 
During the preliminary stage, the design build team will perform analysis on the area to determine the effects caused by the dam removal. Initial findings show a drop in water level within the river, but do, does not show any connection to the area's water table. So long and short of no, it won't affect the water table, but it will affect the water level within the river. So, um, And then we'll skip back to questions 9, 10, and 11 and 12, because they're all inclusive of the septic issue. Um, so this is, you know, information that was provided to us by the Ohio EPA or, and or through other resources. This is this information that we gathered. So, um, so really, you know, the question 12 answers about the, you know, if the pipes were exposed, you know, there have been commitments from those department heads that they would extend pipes if they are exposed. And there are communications to the Ohio EPA to that effect. And, and that will cost the taxpayers because Gary works for us. He'd be using taxpayer dollars for that. Correct. I, I don't know what funds you'd be using, but you'd be using some sort of funds. And I don't want to speak to that for you know, your department. But there were commitments you know, early on that they would be extended. So there, this is posted on the Metro Parks website. If you go to our main page, go to visit, go to Canoe City, and then the dam removal project link is on there. Click on there, and that's where all of our documentation for the project is, including this FAQ. Okay, okay now that begs the question to me. Um, There's many dams being removed on the river, and they're owned by different entities. Like City of Warren, I believe, is responsible for the one at Summit Street. Um, there are ones all the way down, all the way in the Lowville with different entities that own it. This is the only one the Metro Parks owns, correct? Correct. And it is in Warren Township. Has there been discussion, I guess, amongst the board at any time to include the Warren Township trustees in the talks, like right from the beginning with this, why, why were they not, I guess, in the talks? Why is this the first time we're kind of doing this, I guess? And, and that's kind of an answer to Kay's question. Gotcha. The board wants to hop in here. Feel free. Any of the board members know or anyone what, been what, on long enough to... I mean, what you're asking again? I'm basically asking when you guys had these meetings and you had the discussion, we're going to do this, we're going to hire this consultant, we're going to do a study on the dam, now we want to remove it, let's get the funding, let's fill out the application. Why wasn't Warren Township involved in any of that, being that they own kind of property on both sides, I would imagine it's in, within their township. Even out of a courtesy, why weren't they involved in the process it, in the past? I mean, every meeting's open. We don't close anybody out from our meetings. Township trustees, anybody can attend the meetings. Well, I guess we're buying land up in Braceville for the Metro Parks. I imagine you have some correspondence with, I know Niles, we're looking at a bridge and you're dealing with the mayor of Niles more than you're dealing with us as far as the acquiring of the bridge, the painting of the bridge. It just it just seems to me like as public servants, we would share information with different governmental agencies or whatever. We would at least notify, hey, we're in your backyard. We're looking to do this. Any thoughts, any input? What do you think we should do? Or do you have any objection? To me, that just seems like a common sense proposal. And not to mention, we held public meetings on this where, where the Parks Board was invited and they didn't. Yeah. And that's not true, Commissioner. We right. were not at the one, but I've been to well, two you, meetings. Yeah. And, just, and we recently, Warren Township, I'm going back down to 20. And I've been in, and in January, we had you to our board meeting, and we told you about this project in January in detail. And I, when, when I attended a meeting at Warren Township with several you, years ago with John, Okay. The recent meeting, which was what six weeks ago, or whatever. I'm that was. talking to the one in 20 where we, where we had spaces <coughs> for all the parks board there. All three commissioners were there. All three trustees were there, and not one parks board member was there. And they got 21. 21. Mm -hmm. Or 20. Was it 21? Yeah, I don't know. I think it's 21. Okay. Yeah. That's the one I was talking. Right. About. Well, when you go back and say, you know, our meetings are public in the Tribune, just as yours are. 
every meeting that we have is open to the public. We haven't done anything in secret. And no, 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 I'm not, not saying it was done in secret. I'm just saying if, if much parts you got the public hunting area in, in near Walmart. Yeah, yeah. We've got that little subplot. You had joint talks with ODNR. You had talks at, at, then again at the time with Suzette Township trustees too, and I know their fire chief was even involved in some of the talks with that, that, hey, we're acquiring this property. We're thinking of opening up the hunting. We're going to turn over to the Division of Wildlife. It just seems like you would deal with the entities of where we have properties. If we have county property in townships, in bike trail, you've dealt with Champion Township. You've dealt with a lot of the other trustees. We're putting a bike trail through your township. Being that this is more township, I, I just don't understand. I, I guess you said, yeah, they could have come to the meeting. It was notified. They could have showed up. I guess why wasn't the communication jointly uh, somewhat? Well, part and I think that's causing a lot of this hostility with the residents because they, they represent their people. And when they look at their citizens and say, they never reached out to us. They never asked us our opinion. We hear your concerns. We're with you. We understand it. But I, I, that's that's where I'm trying to bring people together now. Yeah. Yeah. Forget the past, but now we're here now. But I, I guess I'm just wondering, was there a, any certain reason why it wasn't in the past? Was this EPA said, well, you deal with it. You don't need to involve them. Or was it just a decision that we're doing our thing and they could have jumped on board if they wanted to, but they didn't? One of the reasons, I mean, water quality on the river corridor from its inception up in the northern parts of our county and Geauga Portage County, the watershed, all the way down to where, where it joins in the, to the Ohio River, has been studied since 1996, at least as, as early a document as I've been able to find, and which we've included in the, in the, uh, uh, as a reference in the, in the frequently asked questions. Um, the whole, uh, all of these studies have, have shown that the removal of these low head dams, which were constructed on a naturally flowing river to alter that flow to provide for principally industrial ponds, if you will, pools, where more water quality was, a bit, quantity rather, was available and where you could, where they could pull water for cooling and they could also discharge water for uh, you know, effluent and have it have it become diluted. Um, with the demise of the industries that do that, and with the rise of EPA regulations that, that prohibit that or significantly limit what can be done, these dams have become obsolete. So this whole project that involves about nine dams from Lowellville, as you mentioned, all the way up to ours, which is the the northernmost one or the most upstream one, has been. Kind of promulgated by the EPA and by the uh, ODNR over the past 25 to 30 years, and when they approached us to undertake this removal, which EPA and ODNR aren't doing, it's up to the individual entities that are responsible for the dams to to engage in in fundraising or or funding sourcing, and then ultimately the the, re the removal. Uh, itself, along with the necessary design and remediation. But when they approached us, we uh, accepted it as a, a naturally occurring um, uh, undertaking that, that would be beneficial for all. And maybe we overlooked the fact that, that some some people may, may not be, uh, you know, enthused or happy or supportive of it. But I, at the time, we didn't think that there was any need to uh, specifically reach out to any particular entities because the, the benefits appeared and still appear to far outweigh the, the, the negative aspects of doing this. We've also had citizens attend our meetings as yeah. far back as 2018. So it, it wasn't as if we were trying to operate underneath anything. We've had you know, events on the river where people have come and discussed things with us that we've always openly invited to our meetings. We've had people attend our meetings before. So I don't I don't know that we didn't know that they didn't know if they were attending meetings. Because they've been there. Now, I'm, I'm coming late into this, but from my reading and background coming up to speed on this, I read somewhere that in 2019 that there was a public meeting with the residents there were 150 people that attended. <coughs> Am I wrong? More than that. More than 150? Uh, there were 
So that that was a public meeting. Yes. Yeah. So there, no, there, there has been. there has been some. Well, thank you. Um, yeah. So there it is. There has been. Some. And up until the meeting at the business incubator over here, where we all attended, Warren City was supposed to own the dam of Lovettsburg. That I believe is some of the part where the Parks Board has curtailed around letting anybody of direction in our township know, but up until then, they believed that that dam was owned by Warren City. Who, we were, who believes that? Uh, apparently the Parks Board, because we were invited by Mayor Franklin to the meeting at the incubator. Uh, actually, we are. Parks, Parks Board has known that we, we have known that we own that dam. You own it, correct. Since yes. we bought it. But it, the EPA <laughs> had, and it was brought to everybody's attention at the incubator meeting, there's I'm sure public record of this, that it was thought that that was under control of Warren City, not Warren Township, where it actually presides. I think that you're talking about the Summit Street Dam, and that's... Yeah. No, 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 Warren no. City definitely owns Summit Street. We don't have any towns. Well, right anyways, now. we've known that since 93 when we took... Well, maybe... But you anyway, know, maybe but, we, you, know, maybe you know, just the history, I know when you say did anybody die up there, I've heard that there has been. Um, Commissioner Polifka made a statement. He said somebody died, but it was from their stupidity. But I do know Summit two, Street. There was one. Well, I'm talking about up there. They said Summit Street. We've had in the city of Warren. We've had people. We're in uh, legal discussions about someone that went over the same dam, a low head dam, and the city, the citizens of Warren are going to be responsible through their insurer for a sizable amount of money. And uh, you know, it, it's basically the same situation as. You have in Levittsburg a hydroelectric dam that is no longer being used. It's not a flood control dam. It's a dam that we as the owners feel has outlived its usefulness. But we could also make the argument that the dam's removed and we encourage kayaking and canoeing and kayaker rolls over and drowns, then it's our fault because we removed the dam and encourage people to be there. I, the, the, so, I don't uh, follow that logic. I'm just yeah. saying, it, it, there, there's an argument to every side with this thing, and that's what we're trying to... Well, ours isn't it. an argument. Ours, we're in court with it about our dam at Summit Street, which the Warren the war City, the war City Dam. Zach, when was this posted uh, on uh, your we website? We just had that posted on Friday. Just on Friday? Yeah, well, we just got on Friday. Yeah, yeah, we were getting it ready for the meeting. I'd like to add one more comment. According to the 2011 uh, Metro Parks Comprehensive Plan, that dam was originally assigned to be taken out by ODOT. Now, how between 2011 and now, I don't know how things change, why they changed, but they did. That was originally an ODOT project, so I can't speak on it. That's all that that comprehensive, comprehensive mm -hmm. plan, plan stipulates. In fact, you know. Yeah, like I said, other state agencies had approached the park board about removal, and I can't speak to that time that was prior to me being an employee, so I can't speak to why it didn't advance. Were you here when, when that baton was passed between ODOT no, and no, Metro Parks? No, it wasn't ODOT and Metro Parks, that's, that isn't, so I think it's that's, not correlated maybe, between maybe, the two maybe the, projects. Maybe the county highway engineer, maybe there was some interrelationship mm -hmm. or something with them, mm -hmm. and that's how... No, from what I can remember, they were looking for mitigation credits, ODOT was at the time, if I remember correctly. So, like I said, it, that just didn't occur. This is a totally different avenue for the state of removal. Okay, I guess the big question is, what is the vested interest of the citizens of Trouble County and the Metro Works Board long term of removing the dam? What is what is our end goal, or what is the Metro Parks end goal of removing the dam? A healthy water system. I know, but well, that's on your mission family. statement. Okay. Have okay. Everything, water. Down, everything we, downstream is going to be positively affected by it. I understand that, but I don't know if that's the the job of the Metro Parks Board to, to spend taxpayer dollars, which are funded well, by it, taxpayer dollars. You he's funded by taxpayer dollars, see, and and that is something. Is that the mission in your mission statement of the Park Board for water clarity and water conservation? Conservation of conservation of all resources, resources including of conservation. As a, as a Warren Township trustee, let me ask one question: You say there's nine dams from here to Lowville. I believe so, yeah. How many of those nine dams are coming out? Where's the next dam going to be after? 
Oh, no. There's, 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 coming out? there's two oh. industrial dams that are not coming out at this no. time. That, that right there completely dams. stops free flowing water. Okay, well, Bullville is, is out and done, and, and the improvements to the area are, are being seen now. Struthers, I believe, is finished. Yeah, and Struthers yep, is right. are finished. Warren City is coming out this year. Yep. Yes. The Summit Street Dam. Um, Youngstown's and working on there. Youngstown and, and Gerard are working Excel on Seller Middle's dam, is it staying? Which one? Seller Middle, is their for, dam going to For now, it is, it, it's not part of the plan project. And it doesn't hold water back. I don't know if you've ever looked at it, but that's a whole other subject. So we're essentially just creating a bigger pool. We're not going to have free flow. You're not going to have free flow all the way down, like you're saying, there was you still be a dam. You can't kayak it like it's been proposed, that this is the great benefit. Well, I believe it's and over unless we have seven moved. miles of river. Yeah, there's a significant... Unless we have new technology where these animals can get over those dams, they get upriver, it's not going to approve that fish life or anything else. Well, locally, between between the start of the watershed and the next dam downstream, which... So it would just be a bigger pool then? Well, it, it, it's true it would be a bigger pool, but instead of, instead of not, not necessarily a bigger pool because you've got a low head dam. There's only a, it's, it's, it's at a specific elevation. Can't break, hold back water and the river bed gradually, but does rise as you go up. The street, big, big question that seems came to me, and, it, and actually it was asked by Stan Boney recently, what is the pool? Upriver, average pull upriver from the dam, and what will it be if the dam were to be removed? We have a study, and I don't have a copy of it, but we have a study that was done that shows that for what, 11 stations from the dam upstream. It shows the current pool water level and the, the revised water level after the dam's removed for both low rainfall conditions, drought, if you will, and uh, the, the reservoir is not releasing significant amounts of water and for high rainfall rates. Is it, is it safe to say, just using figures that I've heard, and I've heard it from East Gate too, they average depth eight foot would go down to four foot without the dam? I, those I, numbers can't, heard? I can't tell you that. Uh, I don't, I don't based care. On, based on like the, like the average, yeah, that would be probably fair to say. And in low, it could be less than that, where it could be Right now, we do have a recreation of boats, pontoons, docks that, should the dam be removed, they'd pretty much be out of business. It'd be un unfloatable or unboatable for the fishermen, for the recreation, it's well, for the boaters that don't want to use a canoe or a kayak. They're not going to be able to use their boats, their pontoons anymore. And fishermen that troll the river, whatever, for muskie aren't going to be able to put a boat in on, on low water levels with the depth it would be without that dam. When we're looking That's at that argument, well, when we're looking at that argument, what I would identify is we're not basing this on kayaks, so we're not basing it on pontoons either. We're basing it on the health of the community. We're basing it on the health of the river, returning it to where it should be. So we're not basing it on recreation. If we're doing and that, it seems though, like a lot have... of the comments have been about, well, we don't want to open this up just for a few kayakers. And I think that's not an accurate assessment of what we're We don't want to open here. it up, period. I mean, I, I, pretty much our students. I do a biology degree from college, right. and the one thing we learned in every class was solution to pollution is dilution. And if you're lowering the water level, we do have open septic that is going there, which we all agreed. You said the solution to pollution is dilution. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. The more water, the more dilute the polluted pollutions become. Okay. If we lower the water and you have pools of pollution, you have pools of <laughs> raw sewage, it's going to get, not going to get diluted. I, I, I think the, the EPA would take an exception to that. Yeah. And the, the, the flow, the amount of water that moves down the river <laughs> has to change. What changes is the depth of a pool, an artificial pool, an artificial pond created behind the low head dam. So the flow rates are there. And that same flow rate is what dilutes any effluent going into the river. It did it for the industries that were along the river, copper well, Public steel and so on, uh, you know, for years. But we're not changing the flow of the river. We're simply we're only changing the elevation of the river as it backs up and, and slows down behind these dams. The wider the river, 
is caused by a, a dam blockage or backup, the slower the rate of movement of that water. You know, you've got a specific flow. The flow is is controlled by Mother Nature and rainfall and runoff, In the Army and by the Army Corps of Engineers and releasing from Berlin Reservoir. That's what controls the amount of flow. We have no control over either of those. So the flow would, would, will still be there, and the dilution effect from that flow will still be there. I, I'd, I'd like to back up a little bit and talk about the water table a little bit. <coughs> now, that question came up, which kind of piqued my interest and started thinking about it. If the water table uh, is affected by uh, the dam, that means that not only is the water on the surface, the surface water getting down to the water table, but the, if there's any pollutants on the surface of the wa uh, surface water, the pollutants are also getting down to the water table. So I asked the board, I sent out a memo, and they're going to ask the project team to maybe do a baseline monitoring test because does anybody out there know if the current water table has any pollution into it? In it, are, are there any uh, bacteria? Okay, because you have raw sewage going into the, the river, right? I mean, that, that seems, that's something we need to know right now before the project's even started. We need to know the two main conventional pollutants, okay, are bacteria and nitrates. Okay, and I don't know if we have any folks out there that are familiar with, with drinking water. If, if pe people are, are, are pulling drinking water out of, the, out of the water table over their wells, if there's any well supplies over there, Nitrates, I don't know, you're a biology major. You ever heard of uh, blue baby syndrome? Where does that come from? That comes from nitrates in the water. So we, those are the first two we want to check. And another thing we want to do, a baseline monitoring test with priority pollutants. Okay? So there's 126 pollutants that need to be tested before this project, a shovel, is even put in the ground. Okay? And that, not a, that doesn't protect people downstream. That affects significantly the people in Warren Township. So if you have any people out there that are on well supply, until we get it confirmed, they may be at risk. They may have been at risk for many years. You want to make sure that that integrity of that well supply out there when you're talking water table has not been compromised. Who knows what that's going to happen 10, 15 years? Right, right now, the pollutants, okay? There's, there's bald eagles down that river corridor, okay? So you got you got bald eagles in that river corridor. They eat fish out of that river. Okay, Poxy, heavy metals specifically. Okay, fish are in that. It's in the fish tissue. Those those heavy metals and those pollutants. Okay, they get in the food chain and not bald eagles, but somehow some way people fish in there. You're talking about musky. Okay, I don't know if you eat musky or not. I don't pay attention to that. But if somebody's eating fish or anything from that river, that gets in, the, in, in their food chain. It gets, in, it gets in their system. Those pollutants are bioaccumulative. They build up in your system. You do not get rid of them. They do not leave your system. And where do you think a lot of these cancers come from? Your body's a filter, okay? Your lungs filter the air you breathe. Your kidneys filter the water you drink. And your liver filters the, the, the food you eat. Your body's a filter, so you get these heavy metals and these toxic materials. This is only significant. This is also a, a significant for the for the people that live in Warren Township. You have to make sure that that water supply is not not compromised. And if you if that water table is being affected by the groundwater by by the surface water over in the river, the pollutants are going down into that into that water table as well as the water. That's something that needs to be investigated quickly. That's something that should have been investigated a long time ago. It, it sounds like you just made 100% so, so case for another study. So what, why, why are you Sure, we'll do the study. Why, why, what's the holdup on the study? Actually, well, in terms of the river itself, the river yeah. corridor, in 1996 there was a study done of, of that very thing from the Ohio line all the way up to above the Brevensburg. Yeah. And I mean there's a there's a two this is this is just a summary <clears throat> sheet and, and page of of a two hundred and seventy nine page report that the Ohio EPA put out that addresses all of the pollutants that were in the river at that time. Now um, I expect and I can't tell you this for sure with any certainty, but I suspect that there's been another study of that nature done at least in segments of it, if not the whole thing, since 
96. Well, I've reached out to the Ohio EPA. Okay. So I, I have not gotten anything back from them. Bill Zawiski and, uh, and uh, Chris Maslow, who's in charge of Trumbull County, and have not heard anything back. But that, that's where we're headed there. And I know that as far as pollutants in the river itself, that's addressed specifically in our design. Okay. Yeah, I understand right. the pollutants in the river. Right. I'm, what, what's come up recently is pollutants that are percolating right. down into the mm -hmm. water table. Yeah. And which, which would percolate down through the soil. Exactly. From what they said, exactly. the soil is exposed, more soil. You get rain, you get wind, you get snow and ice on that soil. That's going to release the contaminants. It may have, some of them may have been trapped for 70 years in that, in that uh, bottom of the, the river. With so the, that's something we need to consider, too. Are we going to expose that stuff? Well, and that's something you want to consider, it. too, with the raw sewage going into that river for the next four years. Right. If you want, if 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 the if, if the county commissioners want to do the responsible thing right now, what you'd do is cap all, cap off those uh, effluent pipes that are discharging direct discharging into the river, and you'd have all those those septic tanks pumped twice a week, twice a month, excuse me, every other week. Septic tank wouldn't hold twice a month. Well, okay. yeah, and that's something we don't want to put a new cost on the residents. Uh, well, that would be on the residents. That'd be on the county commissioners. We give the sewer. We already have a plan for sewer. Well, okay. Right? Well, I'm just saying and, and that, you know, that's another part of this whole thing is there's a if lot. the damage were to be removed, would the study show we should delay it a few years to give the chance for those engineers to run sewer there first so we don't have the sewer running in uh, into well, the, a the, shallower pool of water? The, the time's ticking on the grant. And, you know, we're, another thing that Zach didn't bring up today is that grant runs on the coattails of the city of Akron. So if, if this if this project is studied, the the, the uh, city of Akron is going to come and look for some remedy because they're, they're enjoying an extra uh, on their project. Yeah, how does that tie in? They explain that first. Exactly. Of that. Yeah. So okay. So our project is sponsored by the city of Akron. What? It, it, that's how the Ohio EPA funds these WRSP projects. Like different. So anybody that takes out a WPCL phone, county has on you know, many occasions. <laughs> the off loans on that's water pollution home control fund. Do an acronym right, and so those you get like a percentage point off of interest that you would pay on loans. So let's say so Trimble County. I'm just using this as an example this time. The city of Akron has sponsored ours, and they're getting X amount of money off of their interest on their project. And their project is like 250 million dollars. Something like that. Was that a tunnel project? Yeah, 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 some sort of interceptor. Um, so they're sponsoring our project. So right now we're contractually obligated to that. I guess this is all being talked about, but we never, the commissioners, the, the, the public, what is the timeline for the dam removal? We yeah. don't know. We can well, say, well, it's, it's maybe 2025, maybe 2026, maybe. Well, no, so. We, we so but what so design, we don't know. So yeah, yeah, and I can say design twenty twenty five or sorry, design of this year construction um next year. And could that be so, delayed and still get the loan? When does the loan expire? No, we what's the last time we can do it? The, we can incur small I've actually asked the EPA. So we can incur small delays but nothing long. I have a like, I have a big question that's gonna tie this all together. We have Scott Werner from our engineer's office. Scott, when are we? When will the Meadowbrook Phase One be completed? By? Phase One tentative schedule is to start July of this year, be completed by October 25. Schedule. And there's no guarantee. We're we're more weather based than they are, so there might you know we might be 2026 by the time we get done. And if there's a lot of you know flooding waters on the Mahoney River, they can't be on the you know river more than they get on the. Well, but you, here's my question. You would still go through with the project even if we haven't had our project completed yet? Again, the We're department heads did commit. But you're saying 2026, maybe. Well, so if you can wait till 20, well, 2026, no, why would you? Well, no, it's not. Our, our timeline is 2025 if everything lines up perfectly. Now, weather permits, everything else. If we don't get something in line, it may push us back, you know, three, six months, depending on, you know, okay. especially if there's a lot of flooding on the river, 
we might get pushed back eight months because we can get on the river to do certain activities. Okay, I have a question because one of the residents, I know you have to get permits from the Army Corps of Engineers. Correct. Do you have all those permits? We won't, we don't, we cannot get those permits until they get done with the design work. After the design work's done? Correct. Okay, is it guaranteed then? Because I, I, the reason I'm asking is because this was brought up of, about uh, Rivers and Har 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 Harbors Act. And it goes way back to 1899, and I know that's before even my time. But if if this was used in uh, Florida, because according to the information in here, that the, the rivers could not be changed. It's, it's an navigable, and the Honey River is an navigable river. So. I guess the concern the person across the me has, it, it, is this a done deal that you're going to be able to get this? Because you're going to be changing that river. Well, multiple dams have been done, so obviously they have gotten those permits. Yes, but the other dams that were done weren't navigable water. Yeah, they're the same river. No, it says right in here they weren't. Downstream is, down is typically more navigable than upstream. We're the furthest upstream there is as far as sure. And you know, you keep talking about how bad the water is, but there was a study done and, and it actually says that Ohio's rivers show great improvement since the 1980s. Now, I'm sure you've seen that. Oh, yeah. yeah. And when we start talking about all the nastiness that's in the river now that will be dredged up it, because that's your plan, right? We're going to out and then go in and dredge everything out. It has to be removed. So that'll be done. Now we have a concern about the well water being in, that you brought up being in, infected. And I know that this, from having many conversations with Mr. Neerbrow, that sewer project is going to be in stages. It's not going to be started 2025 and then it's going to be completed. It's going to be done, what, three or four phases? Three phases. Five, three I believe. Phases. So how, how long before that's done? And even when that's done, there's still going to be raw sewage, whether we like it or not, that is coming from Eagle Creek people live. It runs clear out to Braceville. So unless there is action taken, for everybody in Trumbull County to get sewers, and trust me, we've been waiting 30 years in Warren Township. So I'm not picking on you. I, I'm not. I'm just saying there's always going to be sewage running into the river. And you seem to have a problem with the dilution solution and all that. I, I, I know you've got some kind of a degree, and I'm not as smart as you are, but it seems like the way the, the water is running, that the sewage that's running in there does dilute because there's not The same water. amount of pollution gets in the receiving stream, whether the pipes are above the ground or below the ground. I'm not talking about the pipes. I'm talking about the way it's running in there now. The way it's settled in there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, part of that, part of this project is the dredge upstream. Before the dam comes out, uh, that's and, a big and the most expensive part of the dam project, five to 7,000 cubic yards, it's estimated, will come out behind the dam. They're assessing the toxicity right now as we speak of that. You're going to remove 5,000 cubic yards of sediment, possibly toxic sediment, but they're doing sampling. They're doing <clears throat> profiling right now. And that's, 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 me and it just is just being conscious of the environment. To me, that's more important than the dam removal is removing that toxicity if it is there. Okay. I mean, we, we we need we need we need scientific evidence to uh, confirm that because that tells us where we have to put the sediment. That has that has a direct reflection on where that sediment goes. If it's toxic, it goes one place. If it's not toxic, well, you you've got other options. If the dam were to come out, we're going to shrink the pool. So the water table of the river or the water level, 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 level uh -huh. is going to come in. 
Okay. Fair to say. I, we're not holding back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're going to shrink sure. the size sure. of our river. Sure. Maybe a creek, maybe eight foot wide. Nobody can really tell that story at this point. Now, we have homeowners sure. that own all the property along said river. When this property appears that rightfully most of them probably own to the center of the river, some newer deeds don't show it that way. A lot of older deeds do. Uh -huh. Who pays for the cleanup of this toxic sludge that now is going to be exposed for rain, snow, winter, ice for all of our residents? That's the concerns we have of our. So you're saying that's toxicity downstream in the right area. If it's settled, if yes. it's settled into the. So you're, so dam, you're, you're telling me that it's downstream in I the, don't know. In the right area zone. Do you have plans to study all the way 11 miles? No. Exactly. We don't know that either. The buffer plan of Newton but, Falls. But that toxicity is still going to be there whether the riparian zone is 15 feet into the center of the river or 30 feet into the uh, center of the river. You don't think, the we, should, still you don't think we should plan to clean all that toxic Absolutely. Material Absolutely. Absolutely. Is that in your plan? No. Who's well, I mean, we, we, is there, the there, well that, I mean, we, who did we talk to that said that there are some monies available for that? Well, we can I mean, look at that, of 11 miles. We can look at extending the project, but that would take home well, the individual homeowners willing to, you know, provide us that property to do that remediation work. But we talked to somebody at EPA, and they said right now there are funds available to do that. Okay. You guys to are remediate. I didn't say we're going to take on that project. But I'm just saying that you know, sure. there will there will be uh, we did here at the last meeting from a, one of the biologists that was with the dam company there will be destabilization of the banks too. Right. So there's a possibility of the trees. It's going to open it coming up. in and and, right. and cave ins along the shoreline. Well, I thought there, when I read specifications there was money in there to uh, repair riparian zones. Well, like you said, that's 11 only miles worth of it. Well, we're not I, only from Canoe City to the okay. dam, only on your properties, not our residents' properties. And we are, we are here for our rest. I, I thought one of the issues that we were going to address today, maybe I'm way out of line here, was to see if Trumbull Metro Parks was willing to look at an alternative. Yeah. But that's what we're getting to. We're getting just, to yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, you know, and I, I, got a couple I guess we could bring that up. If if the county commissioners were to fund this 30000 we've already got 10000 committed from the county engineer to study the roadways and how it would destabilize the roadways. The, Board of the river. If we were to kick in this 30 grand and we commissioned another study as per Warren Township, uh, another company, I should say, reputable company, and then compare the two, the initial study of the pros and cons of removing the dam with both the studies to give us and everyone at this table a more fair gauge of what is going to happen down the road. No hypotheticals, no, it could do this, it could do that, who's paying for this? Put the two studies together at a later date. I guess what we're asking for is without, or I should say, an, an amicable agreement, gentlemen's agreement ways, would the park board be okay with holding pause for a second while we commission this other study to engage right away? And then, then, then coming back at the table to see, all right, here's facts of, here's what we may be able to do instead of this or in cooperation with this. Here's some other alternatives brought up by an independent company that is studying um, the opposite effect. Because we get it, someone to do a study and make it look black or white, depending on how we want it to look based on us paying them. You basically paid for a study to how do we remove the dam and what's the safest way to do it. They want to pay for a study, how do we not remove the dam and what's the safest way to do it. That's kind of a more fair gauge when we put them both together of the real facts without it being skewed one way or another. So, let me we can't just find an independent company that says, I don't care either way, I'm going to do it. They're going to be skewed by whoever's paying them. So, so I think at this point, you know, we're going to try to ask for the most independent study we can with this a reputable company. But, of course, the input from the, the residents, the input from the trustees is going to be, what are some other alternatives to possibly save our dam, uh, which we understand. We're not, we're not trying to hide anything with that. That's what the study is going to look at. And it may say, the stuff that you're saying is absolutely correct. They may concur with the studies that have already been done by another uh, another um, agency. Yes, sir. Who, who, who's going to send the information to that consultant for the study? Who's going to ask the questions? Is that going to be something that everyone has a part in, or is that the commissioners doing that? 
I, I would say I mean, if we're going to ask for a study, that way we should all be able to add input and, and well, ask what questions. I mean, you just said you're going to get the answer you're looking for by your questions. No, by who I was paying for them. Exactly right. So right. I mean, who's going to who's going to put that together? The request. What have you What have you talked about with this company already? You guys have talked to a company you recommend it to us. You're asking us for the money, so you've done some research on your own on who you want to hire. Do you have a, a better answer for him? I guess. Yeah, I just uh, Tim Hampshire. That from all the research that we did, he's very reputable. And I mean, you guys had your you had your study done. We didn't have any input into that. So you guys are going with DLZ, yes? Yeah? That's not Is that not who also gave us a bid for removal of the dam? Um, I would have to go back and look. I'm not sure. DLZ removing yeah. any yeah. dams anywhere? I'm sure that's probably possible. They have many So dams. it sounds like they, they have already written one pro, so it sounds like they would already have the information to they wrote, write again. They wrote one in pro. They, they proposed to take out this dam. I, I believe that they were, yeah, no, their bid was turned down. Yeah, it was they but the, the, there was never an alternative, never package. alternative package. If you mm -hmm. came to me and said, bid taken out my dam, I'm going to But I think that's price. what we're looking at. They may not be impartial. So if we're trying to find an impartial party, I don't know that that party is the impartial party. How, how would you? Uh, can, 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 can I address okay. this as a professional yeah. engineer? Um, basically, for one thing, a professional engineer is going to look at the facts and, and provide a solution. Certainly that solution could be skewed one way or the other, depending on possibly who hired him, possibly who provides the information. But when you do hire somebody, you can't just tell them, we want an alternative. You have to give them specifics about what we want, what you or all of us want to accomplish. We want to improve the water quality in the river. We want to improve the use of the river from a recreational standpoint, which would mean providing some means of, some safe means of portaging around the dam for canoes, uh, kayaks and the like. And we want to get a solution to any potential pollutants or pollutions that you know, may exist around the dam that would provide for short term or long term solutions to clean it up what's in the river because the whole goal of the removal is to return the river to its natural state and provide a clean, healthy environment for our wildlife and for our recreational use. So you have to be able you have to you have to address the the, the goal of any alternative study in, in that manner. And then they can certainly take that information and other information that you may have other and that, desires. that is the form that you use when you ask the Ohio EPA to do. Ohio, basically all, yeah. of, all of our stuff has been driven by previous studies of the entire corridor undertaken by other entities. Our studies were only addressing our dam, basically. Um, the overall impetus of previous studies was how to improve the river quality by removing the dam. And there's there's a little skew there too because we're looking back, we're thinking 40, 50, 60 years, I think. We're saying when some of the dams are built. But even before that in the 40s, this river was dammed up for Mosquito Reservoir and Berlin. So the natural state of the river will never occur again because we've got two lakes in the middle of of that river. So to say we want to put it back to its pristine natural yeah. state, it'll never do that unless we get rid of Berlin Lake and, and Mosquito Dam also, it'll never happen. Right. Well, so that's not a fair statement. I'm just making a point hey, of that. Hey, Danny, this is, in, is real good information because I don't even believe I've seen some of you guys at the original meetings in 2018. So the very first meeting we had with Eastgate and Ohio EPA that we attended you guys didn't even know there was two dams there. They didn't even know there was two dams there. They were shocked whenever we turned around and said there's a second dam there. So all these studies that were supposedly conducted before that, how in the world can you go from figures 1993, then I heard 1996, how in the world can all these studies be done and you come to your dam, okay, in our area, and you don't even know that there's two dams there? We never looked at. We never looked. We we acquired the property 
No, I'm not faulting you. I'm just saying the whole the whole process. This is not a shot on you. And then the second thing, have you been down to any of you guys? Have you visited Lowville? Have you visited Struthers? Okay, I know you have, Steve. Me and you talk. Yeah. Yeah. You have been down there recently? Yeah. Okay. It's a nice job they did down there on Lowville. But did you see how low that, that level went? But I spent all day down there with them. So it went... And I know you said the study, and you're right. The study is on low months they went. It's 4.4, 4.6 feet. Okay, yeah. yes. No, down to what it's going to go to, which would put some of our streams going into that less than two foot or one foot. So this is stuff that we're concerned about. It is a thing. And here's the last thing I'm going to say from the meeting one that we had with this, with all of us. Okay, and let's them completely off basis. Joanne and Stephanie and everybody from Eastgate said we do not have to take this dam out. It would save us $3.2 million if we kept that dam in there, and we don't have to take it out. Since then, we started with 13 dams. 13 dams from Lowville to Newton Falls. Now we're down to nine, possibly 10. It might be Gerard still kind of iffy. McDonald's iffy, and then you can't take ours from down there on Main Street because that one serves a metal. <coughs> so we went from 13 dams to 9 dams. I mean, unless you think there's really structural damage to that dam and you don't want to assume that liability of the Trumbull Metro Park, and I really don't understand why with everything that's being said with the health factors, and even you guys' own admitting, and you brought up a great point. You did your research on, on the wells, because that is a great concern to us. I know that's our, our residents, but that is a great concern. So with all them factors going in, can't we try to seek an alternative? Or two, just let the dam remain. It's no, not going to affect your money or nothing, even though $100,000 by your estimates is already invested in this, which is a lot of money. But the thing of it is, this first said it could have been saved if you guys are going to keep proceeding with that hundred thousand is going to go to two hundred thousand, to four hundred thousand, to seven hundred thousand. And I'm really going to ask the same question, the same question I've asked since 2018, and we formed a 18-person dance committee. One, why are you taking it out? That's your choice. You own the dam, not us when there is no economical development at all going to be concerned for Warren Township, like Warren City, and there's a very good plan there in place. None for us. Two, a river's already been deemed as clean as it's been in a long, long time. So now we're going to mess with it. Three, who is going to accept that responsibility of the pollutants in our wells and on our banks? Because when that goes down, and Stephen, you turn around and visit it down there, it's going to go halfway down. Well, wait a minute, more than that, because the average for Mahoning River right now is 10.7 foot. So it's going to go down over half. By you guys' own studies, because we have them all, right there in black and white in your study. So why do we even have to get to this when you have such a strong opposition from residents? 897 signatures in two days we got from our residents. You want, you want 2,000? We're going to get you 2,000. So why are we not looking at one, doing an alternative, or two, even a dam there? And if they, if, and let me ask this, if the Metro Parks didn't want the responsibility of the dam, and there was a, a concern with safety of the dam, or concern if we own the dam, we're getting pressure from the EPA, we got to do something, we got to do whatever, they could give the dam to Warren Township, and you guys would take it, right? We cannot give. That is not within our revised plan. You yeah, can't. we have to advertise government can't do and problems. accept a fair and equitable offer, and it has to be approved by the probate court as well. Okay. Finally. So, but you get the dam out of your hands. Well, I, yeah, there's no guarantee that you know all of those things would get approved, but just, I just wanted to say that. So, so what I'm hearing though is the uh, county commissioners may uh, be interested or entertain the possibility of taking over that dam property and taking over the payment, <laughs> the outstanding. Uh, Liability from uh, the amount of project that's been paid for so far? No, not by no. 
I, I think what we're, what we're looking at, and I think what Ed's driving home here is, are there possible or yes. alternatives? That's the whole purpose you know, of this meeting. And today. there's been a lot, even in the, the meeting we were at with John, where you were at, <clears throat> there were a lot of different things brought up. As, and I don't even, I'm not, I'm not into all this scientific stuff, but a lot of different options brought up uh, that can, that can basically accomplish everything you need to accomplish as far as public health and safety, as far as for both um, sides, for both sides. That that don't involve a dam removal. I mean, so the easy answer, using with the funding that we're using, the alternatives are only dam removal or not. It's not true. Eastgate has said this whole time that it could be used for a rock ripple. No, be, not, not, not this grant. This grant is not the same grant that we set it on the meeting at the incubator for. It was all brought out. No, 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 well, Eastgate not, is here. Not, yeah, East I was going to say, where's the gentleman? Where at? And every yeah. study this that I have read, that there is no, yeah. there, it's either leave the dam, take it in, you know, take it out or leave it in. There are no alternatives. And also, I know, Mr. Anthony, we were the, and I, I've read all these studies, hours and hours and hours that have been put together over the last 20 years. And I don't know what the exact date of these studies are, but they do talk about the dam, you know, the old wooden dam behind this dam and they feel that that it's probably eroded away that it's gone and you know oh, I, I understand right. that john you're probably but right. i don't know but what year the that, whole you know, thing of it is but, though is, is whoever started putting it together and again this is nothing on you guys nothing because you it's right. your dam on it. it but it just amazes me that coming into that first second meeting mm -hmm. one they thought it was warren city dam not warren township and two when we told them we said are you aware there was a second dam there Honestly, yeah. everybody looked at each other and like, no. So it just amazes me that whoever's putting this together didn't even know that. I mean, how could you not know that? So I, I understand you guys have, have reasons to take it out, but please understand we have reasons and concerns that it's going to be removed. That's the whole purpose, and that's been from day one. It's not... It's not Gone against you guys. You made your 5 0 vote. I respect that. The problem is now is there's so many unanswered questions and that still remain. And we, as a board of trustees, are going to have to answer these questions like, okay, so I got this on my embankment. What am I going to do? And I know some of that you can go away. And I know people on the outside are already saying, well, that's the resident's responsibility. That's their responsibility to get septic in. Well, really, what people don't know is, no, it's not. Because there's a creek by Trumbull County years and years ago, and you might be able to allude to this, that we were never, ever filled with it. We were supposed to get septic a long time ago. And I know we're sure. talking about two sewers. Sure. Sure. The other creed of it is, or the other thing of this is, this isn't just a Warren Township issue. Because if that pollutants are, and it's cleaned up, and I'm sure it will be in that area, the dam, one way or another, like we're all saying, how many miles? We don't know. 11 miles, that would be ridiculous. It would be millions. But it's just not Warren Township because that river goes downstream. So, well, John, guess what? It goes into Warren. And then it goes into Girard. Then it goes down to Struthers. And then it goes all the way to Lowellville. So this isn't a Warren Township issue. We're telling you guys that this, and I know you brought up a good issue about the health. That's what we're concerned about. Who is going to clean this up? Are they going to come to us and say, well, it's more talented, so it's your responsibility? I, I had a guy, I bought an old house in Kansas, who was 175 years old, <coughs> and I brought an electrician in. We were in the basement, he was looking at my wiring, and he was looking at my pipes, and I was reaching around, shaking things, and he grabbed my hand, and he said, hey, don't shake old pipes. He said, you're going to break them, don't touch it, it's been that way forever, it's better left as it is. And, and I get the feeling a little bit with this, we got these banks. We know we got toxins in the banks. We know we had industry that, that's been there for years. We know that a lot of it is buried in the soils. We know a lot of it is, is covered with the water and it's out of sight, out of mind. So I get asked questions too. If it's shaking the pipes. We lower that water and like you said, you get the rain beating on it. Then we're, then we're creating a situation where now we have to do something and it doesn't sound like the EPA or anybody, are we going to turn a $5 million project into $50 million or $100 million of having to clean up all the way the, the sides of the banks with what we do expose there and what, what causes 
you know, we've already been told there's vehicles in there and there's all kind of other things. Who's going to be responsible for all all of that stuff? Well, is this it, better left as it is, and let's just move on and live our lives? Whoever and, brought over brought up that that point. I, the commissioners are in a much better position than the Metro Parks is to handle a, a project of this scope and magnitude. So maybe the best solution would be to handle to turn over the project, the property, to the county commissioners. You can't do that. Oh, we could. We could. So you can't even turn it over to us? Not the well, project and the funding the way it's set up. I mean, back to the to the study, the 40, I read the RFP on that study. It's a desktop study for $40,000, $30,000, actually. I don't know how it expanded to forty now, but the request is for thirty. And it, it basically, and I'm not, I'm just a layman, but it looks to me that they're going to over, they're going to look over all the, the studies that have been done. They're not going to perform any studies, any borings, any, any yeah, surface. Yeah, no, we're not going to pay forty thousand for them to just plagiarize someone else's work. We're going to. No, no, they're going out to the pay for a real study. For the spring so what, 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 what do you think you get for thirty thousand dollars from an engineering? I mean, they say in their that the RF, the RF. It says study. it's a desktop study and and uh, uh, over you know aerial views and I mean I don't think there's anything uh, scientific in that I'm just asking what is going you want us to, to well, first of all I mean this is all kind of moot because this project is ongoing you know um, yeah but it's not it's not too late we got we got to listen to the public too sure, we're all here to serve it. the public and when we had a meeting we had 100 people there you guys had 900 signatures and i can tell you from experience i received probably 40 phone calls regarding this and 39 of them were don't do anything with the dam i had one person call me and said well you build us a bike trail we can ride all the way to lake erie in the bike trail why won't you let us kayak all the way down the mahoney river just because we did a bike trail one way and we let someone ride a bike doesn't mean we have to open up the river so a kayaker can make it all the way to Lowell if he wants to. That That's the only complaint that I had by someone saying, get rid of the dam. 39 of them were four. And, and when the public speaks, we have to listen. As public servants, we have to listen. Now, of course, we got to be in the best interest of the safety of our citizens. But we've had that dam there forever. The people in Levittsburg are willing to take the risk, and the people in Warren Township, of keeping the dam the way it is. and living there and living along the river and living that lifestyle that they live there, we have to listen to the people. It's it's not my backyard. It's not your backyard, John. It's not your backyard. It's their backyard. And they, they should have a vested say in what goes on in their backyard. Even if it's your dam, it's still in their backyard. we got to be respectful of that. And we need to hear the voices of the people there. And the voices there are saying, hey, at least at least do a study. So I, I am apt to say let's, we're, it's, it's in the best interest to come up with a 30 grand put in what the 10,000 the county engineer did, let's do a study and see what it says. Let's reconvene here in a, in a couple of months and let's see what they have to say. Let's have another thing and let's, it's never too late for something like this. It is too late when it's done, but it isn't too late right now to pull the plug. And I hate to throw good money after bad money. I mean, that's, we don't want to waste money. We don't want to waste anyone's time. We don't want to waste EPA grant. I mean, but if we don't utilize it, there's another entity in the world here in Ohio, probably, that's going to benefit from the money we give back if we don't do it. But here, so it's still going to go into public here. Here's the thing, too. If the EPA is saying this dam has to come out, basically, that's what they're saying, right? Or, or They're saying that the quality of the improved quality of the overall river, the dam should be removed. Okay. That's, so that, if that's what the EPA is saying, and you have an alternative study that says, wait a second, there are alternatives to this, will the EPA not consider that? Not with the funding that we're using. Yeah. Well, with the funny years, and we agree with that. We understand. Okay, so that, that's I, I, not I, saying we can't get funding to still dredge behind the dam where most of the toxins are are put, or to have a portage around the dam so that the kayakers can still kayak around the dam, or a fish ladder, or ripple, or all the. You know, we don't know. Let's. That's why we want to have another study. Let's see. Let's have concrete advice. Here's our options. By the best of the best, we put it all together. We look at it. We make the most best decision we can make. In the, for the benefit of all the citizens. As the Metro Parks Board, a rock ripple with a fish ladder would actually make your canoe city in Lewisburg, Warren Township, a destination. I, when I saw it there, when I went and visited with, with Mr. Boney and looked at it, there's something about that. It's like looking at the dam, to me, was like looking at a covered bridge in Newton Falls or looking at a parks. It, it just had 
an aesthetic feeling of calmness, of peace, of serenity, of nature, in a sense, and something that of historical value that, you know, we're, we're rewriting history all the time. You know, we're doing all kinds of things now that are getting rid of our traditions. And I, I for one, I'm a traditionalist in the, in the most yeah. pure sense of the word um, when it comes to joining the outdoors and nature and, and yeah. things that have been here forever, you know, going to see old mills and going to see the historical sites. To me, when seeing that, it was like more people need to see this dam. And I think if they saw it, they would want it there if they saw it. One comment to that is, as you know, we've entered into contract. We've accepted the grant. We've entered into contract. We've expended somewhere in the vicinity of $100,000 of the grant monies to date. Um, Rob, well, as of the end of last month. It'll be in every now. Yeah. And we're, no matter, uh, it, we don't know. And we can inquire and find out, I think, but we do not know what monetary obligations we may have if we pause the project for a specific period of time or if we abandon the project altogether. From a Metro Parks Board standpoint, any action of that nature will put the Metro Parks in an extreme financial situation. You know what our budget is. You approved it. Does it hurt to ask? No, it doesn't hurt to ask. But if we are obligated to reimburse the grant fees, the money that they've ex ex extended to us, and if we are obligated to pay um, a breach or a closure of contract fees to our contractors, we don't have that money. That would be our responsibility at that time, and that's a decision we'll have to make okay. as the Board of Commissioners. Can, can we at least ask? Out on that. We, we, can, we can certainly ask. I mean, there's no no reason why we can't ask. Right. And, and if it's possible, I would say it would be in our uh, general overall best interest to pause, if we can, without incurring a significant financial obligation, while we resolve the issue of whether there's an alternative. But we need to move on that quickly. We're committed, we're committing the 30,000. I know the engineer is committed to 10,000. Okay. Um, so then if- For an alternative to the dam. Yeah, then, it, then, it, then it would fall to the township or whomever. And, and I, for one, would be willing to, you know, to, to assist in terms of you know, any, any questions or provisions or any information you might need to get a, a, an appropriate study. Uh, but we would have to develop a plan that, that, that we could live with or review the plan that would be pro proposed. Well, I, I just want to stop real quick, real quick here, because I think we're, we're getting dangerously to the point where the actions that we might undertake will be, you know, that we're just heading towards in an alternative. So no, no, I think we're getting very close to the point of you, having a compromise doing what good no, government should do. Just, and just let me just finish my thought here, because it's important for my board to understand that if you do that, then yes, we will have to cancel the contract. I mean, because there is no alternative for us with the grain funds. I understand that. Right. Okay. Right. But right. the question is, what what we have potential financial representative on the phone? viability is? Pardon me? Do we have an Eastgate representative on the we phone? We had one here. But anyone from Eastgate on the phone, or anyone in the crowd from Eastgate? That's what I want to talk about. Okay, we'll get we'll get to you in a second, sir. You'll be the first one we go to when we get to public. As soon as I open up the one, I'm going to open up to all of you. I don't well, want to Eastgate's not a party party to the contract. We're no. we're you know to city of Akron and to the Ohio EPA. Those are things you would have to relate to. And yeah. we can do we, that. We'll, we need to find out. I mean, if, if you wish to go ahead and, and spend the money on an alternative study or alternatives um, in, in general, because that, as John said, that amount of money is not going to come up with a completely developed plan. It's going right. to come up with an overview plan that. that Possibly could but we could say we did our best due yeah. diligence for the yeah. citizens there by allowing them to not just say no to them, to allow them to say, give us your best shot of what you have, and then we can sit down again and readdress what is best. And in the interim, then we need to find out 
what our financial obligations are going to be if we if we do anything other than what we're already committed to doing. Because we don't have the funds in this grant, the grant cannot be used for anything else but Correct. removal of the dam. That's the way it was written. And you can't change that once it's once it's kind of agreed to and funded. I mean, I understand we probably feel like we're putting you in a hard box, but I do know that we've been involved with some grants over the years, all government agencies are. And one thing that I think I learned really quick is there's always someplace else to put that money. Oh, yeah. Oh, the problem is we spend. There's people knocking on their doors every <laughs> yeah. every day wanting that money besides you guys. Right. So hopefully maybe that will give you some. Well, I don't anticipate that. I don't anticipate that the, the, that the balance of the money remaining after contract closure, if that in fact takes place, would be able to be utilized by somebody. Sure. Uh, the question is the money that we've expended to date and penalties. You know, because uh, I mean, Steve is an attorney; he can he can address this more better than I am. But if you if you uh, cancel a contract before its completion, uh, there are expenses and costs and and, and possible penalties that, that can be uh, uh, you know. And that may be something the, again for us to address when we have all the facts. So, okay, if we get out of this, it's going to cost us this much. Mm -hmm. Then maybe we go back to Warren Township. We go back to friends of the Levittsburg Dam and say, "Can you help us out with the money? Can you hold a fundraiser? Can you do something to replenish the park board?" For their efforts that they've already done. Those, I'm not saying we would. I'm just saying there are there are things on the table that we need to look at. We can't just we're not going to stiff any contractor. We're not going to stiff any uh, the EPA or anybody. We don't want to stiff the park board, of course, our own park board. We, but we do understand what you're saying that there are costs that are already been incurred. It's when do we pull the plug and realize it's an investment that money's better spent listening to the people at that time and learn from our mistake. So is everything going to stop right now? Well, I don't know if they can stop everything they can. They're going to they're ask going to right now what they can right do. Now, they can pause, put things on hold, and let's just walk out of this meeting saying, yes, there's another study. Yes, let's get this study commissioned as soon as we possibly can. And then let's look at that data as soon as we get it. In the meantime, all of us at this board continue to do the research of what we need to do, continue to listen to the people, continue to look at all the options, and at least keep an open mind where I don't, I don't want to leave here with Jack being scared to death about his job, you being uh, upset that nobody listened to you, John taking a beating for needlessly for trying to do what he believes is in the best interest of the people. Do we walk out of here like just exhale a little bit and say we want to hold with this thing, we're friends at this table, we're going to come back again and do the best thing we can do. Someone's going to maybe be upset at that time when we do address it, but at least I, I feel in my heart we have half the facts right now, and there's some other facts out there we don't know, and we need to get those facts there on the table so we can all look at the whole puzzle and see what the picture is and not us guesstimating what could happen or what may happen or what won't happen. Yeah, and a lot our, of hypotheticals. Yeah, and our design build team is looking into a lot of things, too, so we can bring, hopefully by the time you guys get done with your study, we have some more information as well from our consultants. But, Can but, you address these same issues? That, that well, so again, the, so again, they're 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 addressing the roadway issue within their <coughs> within their RFP. They're okay. they're they're doing that. They're they're doing we're just not addressing alternatives because the grant doesn't pay for that. Correct. So we're addressing the set. We're testing the sediment currently. So you know, if you do some of those things to pay that, that's where I'm. Been saying like we're addressing that, like that's why I keep saying those certain things. Like we're looking at those things. So, you know, once you maybe once you guys get a complete study together, send it over so our project team can right. say yes, we're already we're looking at three, four, five, six, and seven. Don't do those. You know, oh, it's right there. We supplied y'all with what he planned. Yeah, we get well I, again. There's six there. I, I said there. Yeah, the, yeah. We want to answers to. All right, so we, Six or seven, whatever. Commissioner, would you be okay if we had our clerk add that to the agenda for tomorrow? Absolutely. So we can speed this up. Yeah. So we appropriate thirty thousand dollars towards the study. Yes. Chris, I'm sorry to add more work on you at the last minute, but this is, as you can see, how important it is. And 
Thank you to everyone here. Now we want to go to the public. We want to go to the public now. It was, it was in my understanding that that um, study was going to take 30 days. Is that correct or incorrect? We're going to try to read. initiate as fast well, as I, we can, I, I but I don't know. From what I've read before and what's been said, has that been said before? Or? Uh, we didn't commission uh, it. We're just paying for it. It's to take 30 days. So, I, I, I mean, I, I hope, is, is that in the scope of service? or Did, did, has did they, they, they provide a scope they of service? they have to wait for the spring growing season for certain plants and such? that they're looking for on the river banks and there's some verbiage in there. There's some verbiage in there. I don't I give my copy to be read, so I guess Kay, if you can ask them we want a time frame from them and we, we'd say we'd like this done at least within forty five days. I think I don't know when when did, when did the commissioners get approval to go ahead and work with this? Last Tuesday. We don't want to make a decision on that until we spoke with you guys. Out of fairness and respect to you, that we wanted to discuss it all. Confirmation from your attorney. Correct. That we were allowed to do it to find to find out the legality of us being able to even pay for it. We learned that last Tuesday. Because we're mm -hmm. essentially paying for something that's not county. You know, we got to do things within the scope of our work. Who, who's the study being done? For? Who's the requesting party? Warren Township. Warren Township. Okay. And how did you come across using DLZ? How did you? We already had that discussion at your meeting. Yeah, well, I mean, we're for everyone in the room. Where did the. Uh, it was committed to me by Trumbull County Engineer Randy. Trumbull County Engineer Randy Smith, okay. Yeah, when you. Yeah, I'm going to start. I have to start with this gentleman here. And, sir, if you could, um, I have a microphone here if you can pass it off. Who you are and where you're from. That's what they brief. Two minutes, please. I'm from Gerard, Ohio. I'm a board member with Friends of the Honey River. I can save you $30,000. It's been done. It's being done all over the country. The alternatives with uh, the dam removal. Instead of dam removal, they do dam mitigation. They do dam modification. It's been accepted by a different state agency, environmental groups. Uh, most notably, um, uh, Iowa, Nate Hoogevin with Iowa. I have a, the document right here. I sent it to you by email this morning. Um, so if you want to take a look at that, the one that I sent you by email has all the links in it, so you can go to those links and find out all the information on it. But it has been done otherwise. But let me just say, you kind of wasted your time here today because you don't have all the players at the table. You needed Eastgate here and you needed Ohio EPA before you can make an informed decision. Those are the people that really are, that Eastgate has driven the ball for this thing. They, Eastgate was invited. They were here for a little bit and he, he left. But well, he needs to be at the table and answering the questions. That, that there was a lot of misinformation given out today, and I wasn't going to step up and say step on toes because I'm just I'm just a steel worker for board member for Friends of the High River. You need the people who know the answers to your questions before you can make informed decisions. Hey, we'd ask the uh, county engineers on the line. You want to know if you can unmute the, unmute the phones, and then he'd like to say something. Randy, hit star six. Commissioner, sir, can you hear me? We can. Hey, just for one point of clarification, if you're putting something on the agenda for tomorrow, um, and I know John Brown had mentioned this as far as the additional 10,000, um, the way that contract was set up, or my understanding with the board, is essentially I would be responsible for 25% of the cost up to the maximum of $10,000. Uh, the $10,000 was for any additional meetings or um, additional requests from the consulting engineer. So the contract uh, will basically be for $30,000 subject to contingencies for meetings and things of that nature uh, in the amount of $10,000 uh, to proceed from there. Does that make sense to you? It does not, Randy. We were told at the meeting in Warren Township it was going to cost forty thousand, and you said you were in for ten, and they were requesting thirty from us. What do you got later? Thirty. Yeah, at the meeting. You're you're correct. So I'm committed to basically twenty five percent of the forty thousand. It may only be thirty thousand at the end of the day. Okay, so okay, I got you then. So you're committing up to ten thousand. We're committing up to thirty thousand, and if the study is less than that then we'll pay 75% and you'll pay 25%. That is correct. Okay, we'll make sure we word that correctly in the, uh, and uh, well, with us, it's just, we're gonna commit up to 30,000. 30, and one other uh, uh, clarification in regards to the alternative 
obviously that is part of the study. The other part is addressing some of the other concerns that were outstanding. Which were, <coughs> which were other concerns outstanding, Randy? I think they were all brought to the, the table today, and I know they show up in some of the frequently asked questions. Okay. Hey, Randy, would you, would you put some of those questions in writing that we could turn over to the engineer, um, some of the concerns that you have so that we make sure they answer everything in their study that we need answered or that we'd like to see answered? As well of as course, and I know Attorney Wilson does exactly. have those. We did a pretty extensive review the other, the other day in regards to the concerns. Okay. Hey, Randy, while we're on the phone, how did you come to decide on or use DLZ? What's your background and experience with them, or how, do, how are you affiliated with them? We worked with DLZ in the past on bridge projects, and I noticed that both MS consultants and GPD were utilized uh, as part of this process previously. Certainly, they're both good firms, uh, but it was just the thought that, okay, what other firm uh, in Ohio has experience with dams and DLZ came up. Never use the division concerning or related to dam removal, remediation, or upgrades. I guess my question is, for what, what are we going to receive as citizens from a $30,000 uh, desktop. engineering desktop study? Well, I think, John, to back up, I appreciate the commissioner's hiring attorney Wilson uh, to begin with because I know he spoke up at the workshop last Tuesday um, and addressed some of these issues that showed up in the frequently asked questions. And if I understood correctly um, over the Internet that these were posted last Friday. Uh, if you turn around and you make some comparisons to some of the other reports and so forth, including your design-build contract, I'm not sure all of that information is actually contained. All of these tasks are contained within your contract to actually have your contract design build team perform these functions. You so know, my I mean, point being to the county commissioners, I appreciate the due diligence because I'm not sure these would have been addressed had they not been raised by the county to begin with. And I, I think mean, everyone has already mentioned it, debating, but I think they're all in our RFPs and RFQs. They all have been um, spoken for. Randy, just hang on the line. Otherwise, we take a few more questions in case it involves you, if that's okay. Yes, sir. Okay, sir, you can come on up and take the microphone. Thank you for waiting so long. You know, please. Just leave it over there. Oh, okay. Uh, just turn it on. My first question is about the. Uh, the um, why you guys didn't get a rent from the Corps engineers? I heard you have. Is that on? Have you? Oh. I, I, at this point, I don't know if they have. I, well, if you would have, they'd have yeah. told you what, permit or what work you need to do okay, to prepare for the uh, dam removal. And you might not have had to do all the same these things. They may be unnecessary. They've been, con they been contacted you by the You have to go to the Corps of Engineers. It's a federal navigable yeah. waterway. Okay? It's been done. And they will tell you what studies to do. Well, and they'll even ask you the stupid question is why you want to take it out? If they don't get a decent answer, you're not going to take it out. Take the not. And the other but, thing, this uh, increased recreational use, this thing's going to be kayaks only when you get done. We've had float planes on that river. We've had uh, $50,000 uh, speedboat with airport water skiing, uh, pontoon boats, anything you can think of has been on that river. You're going to eliminate all that and turn it down just to kayaks because of the depth of water. Stupid. We need that for the record. The people listening can't hear you. You need to say your name too, sir. Yes. Hold on. No, oh, there you go. There you go. My name's John. I'm from Bracewell. I lived on the river for 40 years. But he said, "Was just right." It was like skiing, uh, ski mobiles, fishing, hunting, uh, 
hockey. Everything happened there. It was like a weekends was like a steady thing. We used to have a, a tour got up just back in the nineties, Shirley Jory or something. Eight or ten years. There was a there was a, a free market there and, and music and stuff like that. The community came. If people leave the dam alone and get your act together, the, 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 the new city will thrive. The river will when he said there won't be nothing left there, you understand? Just for the kayakers to go down more. If you want to kayak that far, they can go to Newton Falls and kayak down to New City at Stan Mile. Be nice to we love the we love the dam. If it was falling apart, we'd say go ahead and take it. You're gonna ruin the ecosystem, you're gonna ruin the riparian buffer zone, you can't repair it, and the water itself is not anywhere near as bad as you say it is. You say, well, on Eagle Creek, we can drink the water three miles up the river. Drink the water. It purifies the river. Clam, the mussels that are from the House Department of Natural Resources, are against a lot of the move, and they're against a lot of kill. You're breaking the law right there. You do it. Try to be kind. Leave the dam alone. Everything will be fine. Anybody else? Sean? I know you're familiar with stating your name, so please do. Sean Shook, Trumbull County resident. Uh, it seems like it took a long time today to get to one of the most important answers. And this is actually something that I specifically addressed, not in the last Metro Parks meeting, but in the meeting before that, after I sat through a whole meeting and this didn't come up. That question is, can they stop the process? Will they stop the process? It's the most important thing here. Nothing else is going to matter if they won't stop. Now, you know, and I don't understand because I asked this specifically in that meeting, and they said they didn't know. They were going to look into it. And here we are sitting here today, and you still don't have the answer. You don't know if you can, and if you do, you don't know what the consequences are going to be. You just stated that. So what did you guys do since that meeting? Kay was there. Kay knows what I'm talking about. I specifically addressed this. And you did nothing. And this study, this thirty, forty thousand dollar study, what are we really going to get for that? I mean, there's a study for everything. There's a study for this. There's a study against it. What are you going to get for that thirty, forty thousand dollars? You need to see whether or not they can stop this process. If they can't stop the process because the consequences are too severe, then what's the point of the study? And what's it going to tell us that we probably don't already know anyway? We know that there are downfalls to leaving the dam, and we know that there are downfalls to taking it out. They know that people want it to stay. They know there are, there are alternatives to, to not taking it out. We all know that. But it costs a lot of money. Money they don't have, money they're not going to use. They've made it clear that the money for taking out the dam can only be used for taking it out. We've known that. That's nothing new. If you spend that thirty, forty thousand dollars right now without them doing what they need to do, you could be just wasting more taxpayer money. I, I don't understand. It seems like we really spent a lot of time here today getting beating around the bush to get to where we are now. Thank you. Who's next? My name is Dave Lou on the Riverview Drive in Oldsburg. My question is, what happens to property values? This turns into a creek other than a river. You know what happened up in Lake Milton when they lowered the water level? Property values plummeted. But they came back because they got their water back. We're not going to get it back. I'm just curious as to, does anybody give thought to people that live on the river? Their property values, what happens to them? My taxes just went up. Are they going to lower when we end up with a trip? Thank you. Well, I can tell you, from what we've seen, there's a neighborhood in Cortland that lived on a golf course. They got rid of the golf course, and people used to be able to see the green out their back door, and they all had golf carts. And their property taxes all went up, even though there's no golf course there anymore. So I'm just speaking from fact that these poor people bought golf course frontage property and Walnut Run Golf Course is now no longer, and they're looking at a big field right now and paying more for it. Excuse me, Mr. Noy. I 
I've owned that home for 50 years. That that was this taking this dam out wasn't in the discussion when I bought my property. And that just says taking the golf course out wasn't a discussion no. when those people bought it. Somebody I'm just saying property taxes stayed up. It isn't like someone's going to give you a break on your tax. Take that into consideration too. I realize there are alternatives on the Metro Parks Board of doing this, and I still don't understand why. But I want, I'm just curious as to what happens to my property. Understand. I'm Ed Brothorn, Township President. I'm also president of Our Life Count, which was a group that we formed in the early 2000s to deal with the land that we had in Warren Township. So as citizens of Warren Township, we'd like people to consider the fact that we lived through a nightmare environmentally and health-wise to that landfill, which made us a lot smarter. One of the big things I noticed that we were missing today, we talked about the EPA studies and the ODNR studies. And if you ask the Ohio EPA, what are the health impacts? Or if you ask ODNR, what are the health impacts to the community? They can't answer that question because that is not their department. You would need to contact the Ohio Department of Health or the ATSDR, which is the Agency for Toxic Disease Registry, which is out of the CDC. So when we're considering health issues, the studies you guys have, interpretations of those studies are not based on anything about health. So I think that we are missing a whole key component of one of the big concerns we have, and that is the health issues. The other things with the environmental things, I heard things like, um, you know, reducing the level of the water and, and exposing the sediment. That water that's there now acts as a natural cap for those toxins that are in those sediments. It's pretty much like on North River Road, the old <clears throat> uh, copper well there, on the same side as the river, they capped that area because that was the safest remediation they had providing a cap over those soils, and that's kind of what the water does naturally. So our concern about the sediment along the river that will not be your issue, and you've ready, readily acknowledged that, um, becomes another burden to taxpayers. The other thing that was stated is uh, grant money is, is not taxpayer money. A any money you get is taxpayer money. When it comes from the state, we pay taxes for that. Um, there's been no study done for the health. The unhealthy river system, you acknowledged that there was a study done in 96. In 1996, when that study was done, we only hit 11 markers for the EPA and the stuff that was in that river. By 2013, we hit 87 of those markers in the river. So we're now 11 years further. How many more markers have we hit? And to, to demonstrate that that water is cleaned, um, we have walleye, and you've acknowledged that potential of muscle there. And if they're there and it's an endangered species, there'll be a plan to relocate. So you want to take you know, something that's been put in our area that's prestige and, and just relocate it so we can have kayaks go down the river. The other thing with the uh, septic, again, we're gonna pass the buck to someone else and say that the sanitation department will extend those pipes out. We've been waiting 30 years to get that source system. How long is it gonna take to get a pipe extended out? We don't hold a lot of, you know, hope in that. The other thing is when you reduce the water level in the river, you know how have those things going into less water. And I know the phrase you use, Denny, but my phrase is, is pollution is not the solution to that pollution. And we still need a million dollars from House Bill 33 to be able to complete that sort of project. So just because it's gonna start 25, 26, that area, how many years could we be waiting till it's all done? So that's a question we have posed there. Um, also, we haven't thought about things like that little area there provides a water service, a water source for our fire department. That's emergency services in people's lives. The other thing we haven't thought about is the PNL canal that's there is a, it's a historical markered site. Removing that dam is going to impact that canal. And it was like kind of ironic because today there was an article in or yesterday about um, the P&O Canal coming down in through Warren, and I, and I wonder how those are going to be impacted. However, they don't have a historical mark yet. We do. Um, and the endangered species, as far as the mussel, we don't know that that's the only endangered species we have out there because we also had, um, right up the road, Indiana bat. And I know no one's even looked at that. Um, we're talking about improving um, the water system there, and again, the water system has been improving, and I know that Ohio EPA is pushing for this all over the state, and I can understand why you would listen to what 
we determined to be the state agency for the environment. But let me tell you why the citizens don't. That same industry licensed the landfill that sat out in Warren City property, which was surrounded by Warren Township property. The reason we ended up being an urgent public health hazard was because when you put drywall and it gets broke up and wet, it emits hydrogen sulfide. Now, I don't know about you, and I don't have any degree in that area, but I'm smart enough to know that you're going to run over that drywall in the landfill and you're not putting an umbrella over it. So what did you think was going to happen? So we got all the groups together, Ohio EPA, US EPA, <coughs> ATSDR, Ohio Department of Health. We had every entity that was anything involved in that. And it ended up that they determined that landfill indeed was the cause of the problem. And the US EPA Superfund money spent over $4 million to engineer a chemical treatment center and worked with the um, Warren City's uh, sewer people to, to, to do that. Now, we've got a sleeping giant there that we still deal with every day. The people in this room have been residents of that river for a long time, and they're telling you things that have happened. Cars. How about the mortar we found out there? What if that was a live round? Do we know if there is any more? We're actually going to open a Pandora's box when we expose that, because the tests you're doing don't tell you some of the things that these good people know. And we feel like you haven't listened to what we've said. And, you, and you know, you say it's, you know, you refer to it as our dam. You represent the taxpayers of Trumbull County, and that is our dam. And we just want you to stop, put the brakes on, and look at these things and make sure of what you're doing. Because we had the same issue with the landfill, that it was left a burden for someone else. Because those owners didn't pay a dime for any of that. Uh, my name is Gavin. I, I grew up in Trumbull County, live in Mahoney now, and I'm the chairman of the Friends of Mahoney River. Um, I just want to make just a compassionate plea. My life, my specialty, I do have degrees, and my specialty is in stream oiling. This is what I do. This is what I'm passionate about. This is all I care about in life. Cleaning up rivers, making them navigable, and making them better for all the civilians that, are, that, that use it. I've been a part of two dam removals, the Struthers and the local dam. They've had amazing success with the project. And I guess what I'm saying is we, we look at all these studies and stuff and, and people that are funding these studies. The, the, the people get into this field because they truly love the environment. They love endangered animals. They love bats. They love turtles. They love everything. And every aspect of this is taken into account before anything is done. Every um, Army Corps of Engineers that they do get permitting for this before they even start the study. They have to submit a 30% design for approval. And what I'm saying is like, the environmental people, we care about the environment first. We don't have an agenda to keep the dam. I know it's great to recreate on, and there will be recreation that will just take on a different form. And I guess what I'm saying is like, I just, they're not, it's in the environmental field, environment is the only thing we care about really. We wanna make sure that it's a safe passageway for everybody. We wanna make sure that all animals are safe, that they have clean water for generations, and a dam is the worst thing that can happen in an area as far as, especially with open sewage, as far as, you know, the dilution of pollution that was brought up, that's the thing that went away in the 60s because of the Ohio EPA and the rivers on fire. So that hasn't been a thing forever. But the EPA has our best interest in mind, and these projects are funded because they truly care about the citizens. I believe that. And I know as a stream specialist and as a weapon specialist, the only thing that really, really will help improve the community is dam removal and, you know, stream restoration. Can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. So you don't agree that a rock rep on a fish ladder would do the same thing? Um, the cost benefit of a rock, rock, rock ladder and fish, it's long term, it's more expensive than dam removal. Because you have to have a constant upkeep, a constant maintenance. So in the long run, dam removal is your cheaper cost. We're going by cost, not well, I mean, a, a rock rip is essentially just a longer dam, and I mean, I, 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 like I said, dam removal, that's what I've done. Rock ripples, they are just, it's just a pile of rocks in the river, so it doesn't really add anything to it. I would say keep the dam before you add a rock ripple. You were involved in Louisville and Struthers. When the river level went down, let's say, Ohio EPA in uh, ODNR is saying one-third to one-half at the meetings we were at down at Eastgate. When that 
more polluted river in Lowville went down, what were the ramifications environmentally for the riverbanks down there? Well, so the dredging happens before the dam removed. So that's going to take, you know, the first step is to go in with the barge and the dredge, and they have, you know, dewatering bags off site. And then that, you know, that once after I think it's 14 months, it gets taken to a landfill. But, um, so what was your question? The water level. The water level is too soon to tell. It's going to be based off a regional curve that they are using based for all of the streamlines. So they'll take a sample of a stream in the watershed. They'll come up with a regional model, and they will then run simulations to see what happens at various levels in order to get their rock ripples established. And the elevation of the water will be based on the furthest or the next downstream river. So I'm talking about, though, it's as the river, you know, Receive. <laughs> they, they use they use rock armor on the banks, so that was that that pressure from the water that the rock will suffice for that. Oh, little constructions on a dam. Make that clear. It's not like a river. There were pillars and rocks. Right. It's just a different form of dam, but it's a dam. Construction. It was not really a dam. It was a dam. People have been saying that for a long time. Just look look up the words when it takes. How far how far do they put the rock? Tens of thousands of tons of. Uh, Research, 
put all the facts on the table, find out what is factual and what is not, and then base our decisions based on the facts as we know it and what's in the best interest of the citizens. And yeah, there's an economic factor. There, that may outweigh the environmental factor there, or, or vice versa, it could happen. My big fear is we do a $5 million fix, which causes a 50 or $100 million problem down the road with exposure of the contaminants along the shoreline of the banks. And all we're doing is kicking the can to other people in favor of one group or another group. We need to, we need to look at what's the best thing. Once we have all the facts, I think we'll make a sound decision of what needs to be done. And to say we already spent money, so we got to keep going with it, that's not an argument going on in my head. I'm going to do what's best right now. And if there's money wasted, there's money wasted, lesson learned, shame on the people before us that didn't do the due diligence back then or, or didn't get involved. We need to do what's in the best interest of the environment, the citizens, the tradition, the economy. There's a lot of factors that come into this thing and not one supersedes the other. I want to take except for public safety and public health. And, and that there, there's a lot of gray area with that right now too. And we're doing our best in all of our entities to do what we do. We, had, we do have to follow our mission statement. We do have to follow what they elected me to do, what they elected you to do, what you were appointed to do. Um, in the best interest of the mission statement of who we represent. I think we made great success here today, and I hope everybody walks away from this table today thankful we had this meeting, and I don't think it was a waste of time at all. And, uh, again, I think during this pause period now, let's just keep an open mind. We'll come back to the table. We'll roll our sleeves up again, and then we'll make a good decision when that time comes. And, citizens, thank you for being a part of what you do, thank you for caring about the community you live in and being passionate. I understand tempers are flare with this stuff sometimes because not everybody was raised the same way. Not everybody has the same memory and experiences and, and firsthand knowledge of some of the stuff. But at least we can be respectful of each other to get our points across in a professional way. And hopefully things work out in the best interest for a majority of us, I should say. So with that... Make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. Mr. Cancel Mesa? Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. For We're going to have a meeting now? No, no. You just make a motion for our. Make a motion for our meeting to adjourn also. Second. Okay. Favor? Favor. Uh, I'm going to get a copy of that.